All right, welcome back to another HonCast.com presentation. I'm Breaky CPK, going to be your shoutcasting host, and joining me once again is Toby Wonkenobi of Gamesta.com, and this is the DreamHack semifinals, Game 3 in this best out of three series, TXL on the Legion side. They're taking on KD Gaming, only four of them, but they somehow won that last game, and i got to tell you, I wasn't casting, but I was watching their screens. That was a crazy performance from KD Gaming, no doubt. I don't think anyone actually knows how the hell we got to a third game. That <laughs> it's and would you believe Richard Hack's band first right off too? So just yeah. I just thought I'd note that one the one hero which completely ripped the TXL lineup um, is now banned from this game. So uh, <laughs> but uh, just what a fight even they're even taking that behemoth. So uh, maybe they're even Ooh. looking and saying, okay, well that's one of your four V five strats. What else have you got? Throw yeah. something new. And they're gonna have to as well. And I think TXL are gonna take a different approach. They've got to be more aggressive. They're playing five V four. Yeah, you, you have, you, when you're up 5 versus 4, I mean, we're talking about that the first game. We talked so much about KD Gaming, what they should do, but what should TXL do? I mean, people yeah. think that 5 versus 4, oh, well, you're just going to stomp them. That's not the case, no. as we just saw last game, especially when you're going up against such high-tier players from KD Gaming. And TXL, they need to play aggressive, no doubt. If you outnumber them, you have to take advantage of that. And unfortunately, last game, it just seemed like they were playing passive. They were sitting behind the towers, waiting for the for the KD Gaming to push rather than themselves. And that's uh, that's why, at least in my opinion, why we saw the victory go in favor of KD Gaming, but I gotta tell you, I just talked to KD Gaming after that game, uh, several other players, including Kabop, and they are they are pumped. They yeah. are ready for this third game, and they since they won that last one in such a dominant performance, they really do believe that they can win this game three here. Dude, winning that second game would be like hero heroin to these guys. It is <laughs> going to set them so bloody high. If not heroin, ecstasy, or maybe some sort of weird combination of the two of them, they're sorting <laughs> up both nostrils. Um, nice. Literally, these guys are going to be pushing this in first pick Zephyr as well um, coming out from TXL so literally I'm wondering if they're just going to go okay we're just going to pick up the best here as we possibly can mm -hmm. we're going to rice it up as much as we possibly can play the same game we did last time even throw a Tempest in there so they can at least try and keep up with the levels the level increases that was a big thing where, which I saw in the last game the level increase changed drastically you saw a level 20 wretched hag running yeah. around and the highest level at that point was 14 on the uh, yeah. on the uh, help on site it's like what, what exactly can the TXL guys do when you go up against that higher level. It's one player can dominate your entire team if he gets the advantage. I really want to see a, a good ganking lineup coming out here from uh, the TXL boys to actually try and get back on top of this one. Zephyr, he's not bad. He'll get himself in there. He'll push it. He'll do, do, do the damage. But to actually bring down what we've got now, a Valk and a Soul Seal. So we're seeing a Valk coming in once again for the KDE side. Um, and Overpower has a Soul Sealer in his hands at the moment. But that's massive DPS. That's massive pushing power. And obviously, Soul Sealer, great solo. Valk, we saw him last time. He managed to actually pop up and, uh, well, push out, push out lanes perfectly. Got good, got good arrows. Was able to actually get on top of it as well. Leap in, leap out. Get yourself in and out of the battles all the time. Might even see on Soul Steel a, a port key. Um, it seemed to be the item, the item to actually go for KDE, not only to actually help them survive, but also to help them initiate. There's many, many things that are open to KDE right now, but there's also so much open to TXL, and they've gone for Thunderbringer. They've actually gone Ooh. for DPS. I wouldn't be surprised if we do see um, if, if he's actually replaced into Pyromancer, because. Yeah. I, I, this, and Witch Slayer, too. D double stun, mass DPS. Mm -hmm. It's. They're focused. They're going to they're gonna roam. They're going to gank. Yeah. And, the, and then leave us the rest. Yeah, we were just talking about they need to play more aggressive. And no doubt Thunderbringer and Witch Slayer definitely bring that to the table. I mean, they're they're great roamers, like you said, and they bring great burst damage. Yeah. And I think that's what they're focused for. Already going up against the Soul Sealer Valkyrie, two targets that they don't tend to have the greatest amount of life, and they definitely don't have the greatest amount of armor either. And uh, both of the Witch Slayer and Thunderbringer, no doubt, can really burst those heroes down quickly. Kaba, however, uh, KD Gaming, I do like that Soul Stealer pick. He's... He, again, he's a, he's a carry type hero that can be very effective early on in the game. And uh, with KD Gaming, their strategy, that's what they want to try to get. They want to try to get the early level lead and get the early farm. Because of that portal key on Soul Sealer will most likely be a solid pickup. And it can make things happen early on. Magnus, the next pickup there for KD Gaming. So they're going with uh, another initiator, a guy to set up ganks, and, and another stun as well. I, th I think they really do like the stuns uh, simply because uh, they, they like to use the stuns to save themselves, not only to, to go into fights, but to also save themselves as we've seen in situations. 
situations, uh, especially being down a man from the beginning. So as in the next two picks, immediately coming out pretty fast, in fact, from TXL. It seems like they really knew what they were doing and wanted to go for. They go with Glacius and Forsaken Archer to finish off their lineup. So they go with another carry in Forsaken Archer, and then Glacius, obviously, for his Aura and his great CC as well. So this Legion team, I mean, they definitely have a solid team, and they got great, bur great burst damage out of Witch Slayer and Thunderbringer, no doubt. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if they can make it work all together. Is it going to be enough, though? Like, you, of course, you got the Glacius Aura that floods the map, and we've seen it so many times. It allows you to spam your spells up as much as you possibly want, and they're going to want to do that against KDE, even if it's just early game harass. Um, you want to get that off. And Pyromancer comes up as the last pick here for KDE, so he doesn't have the best escape, yeah. um, but you look at all, th all three of these areas here, you put a port key on Soul Stealer, and you're literally moving yourself in and out of the battle. Magmas can do it himself, mm -hmm. and Pyromancer, if those stuns land, um, it's all over. And they, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if KDE are just going to look to say, okay, we can run our lanes. You've got a double stun lane coming out from Magmus as well as Pyro. You know those yeah. two are going to be together. Valkyrie, Soul Sealer, Solos. Um, throw them down in different lanes. We're probably going to see Pyro and Magmus probably um, head towards the bottom lane and see, if they, see what they can do around the trees down the bottom there and allow Valk to actually solo up the top maybe. Um, even if it's a pull up the top, so I might switch those two around. Uh, but you look, you look towards the Legion side as well. And um, you look at their lineup. It's... It's, it's, it's very uh, dynamic. They can move themselves around. I've almost got a funny feeling that Witch Slayer and Thunderbringer aren't even going to be in a lane. Um, I've got a funny <laughs> feeling they're just going to be moving up and down between the mid, between the between the bottom, between the top. And uh, even just like Glacius Farm up to get that get that uh, that aura up as fast as you possibly can to allow them to spam their spells, to allow them to keep that harass going in the mm -hmm. back of KDA. Um, I'm interested to see exactly how both teams approach this one because last game we got surprised. Um, this game, I think we're going to be in for a treat. Yeah, no doubt. And Glacius, a very solid pick of a course for TXL. It makes a lot of sense with this lineup, as you said. A lot of spam type abilities from this Legion team. Very mana intensive, so the Glacius R will definitely help for TXL. So the game has now officially started. Again, it's TXL taking on KD Gaming. This is game three here at the DreamHack Tournament. The semifinals. KD Gaming playing with the man down simply because Hani, unfortunately, has not even made it to the event yet. He's had some travel issues. Uh, he is on his way, but he is just not here yet. So, uh, KD Gaming going uh, you know, without him, and <laughs> Bob Hanser throws out a stun and then runs back to the well. He accidentally... And then he used a health potion. What is... Uh that's interesting. Magic's, Magic's having some troubles with his puns, apparently. Uh, I mean, it's only a health potion, but uh, it, that's 100 gold. I mean, early on in the game, it's it kind of sucks to, to have that happen. I mean, hopefully it doesn't cause too much of an issue, but we'll see. But they are making it out to the lanes, and uh, the obvious lanes, as you pretty much called, at least for the Hellborn side, Soul Sealer's going to be soloing middle, and Valkyrie's up top. As far as the Legion side, Glacius right now hanging around the middle area. Perhaps we're going to run a Glacius Zephyr middle lane. They do not want to allow the Soul Sealer to get farmed, so I think that's the thinking behind TXL. And uh, that's going to be difficult for Soul Sealer, no doubt. With that said, Witch Slayer and Forsaken Archer looks like they're probably heading top. And they're going to allow Thunderbringer to actually solo bottom against the double stun lane. I, I don't know if I like that too much. I... You, you have to you have to know that Pyromancer and Magmas are going bottom if you're TXL, so you have to send two down there, in my opinion. But uh, Thunderbringer, he's going to have a tough time. And in fact, you see him right now; he's just hiding in the jungle because he knows uh, he does not want to risk anything against that double stun combination. But no rune action or anything. In fact, Invis rune picked up by Magmas, and now he's headed, headed back to the bottom lane. But uh, so yeah, I'm I'm, curi I'm curious how this uh, bottom lane, especially, is going to play out because Thunderbringer by himself, he can definitely have some good range and uh, can spam his abilities and whatnot. But against that double stun, he's a pretty fragile target. So it's going to be interesting. As there is a lane switch though coming up, Soul Stealers going to the bottom lane immediately. They saw that that two versus one, and they did not like it. A very good reaction from KD Gaming, no doubt. Yeah, well, that that was perfect timing. Mean, that's what they needed to do as well. Magmus is invis, actually wearing off. Now he goes in for the stun, double stun on the back of Glacius. They want to bring him down. They might almost do it as well. He is falling himself back now, just harassing it from behind, and that's that's the uh, that is exactly the lane they need to do. So uh, I'm wondering if we even see a bit of a switcheroo coming out right now. Thunderbringer really pushing Soul Stealer back now. Um, he's got a lot of damage coming off the back of it, using a lot of mana to do so. In fact, it's only still down half mana at the moment. So just using that chain lightning, which of course does niggle you on the back. Soul Sealer was a little bit injured from the from that middle, middle battle before. Um, but uh, it's Thunderbringer I'm not quite sure he can actually hold this one off because I think Soul Steel is going to have a great time. He's going to try and tower hug in the bottom lane unless they actually get the ganking off there, which is very, very hard to do on that solo on the bottom lane, bottom lane from the Hellborn because uh, he's so, so close to the tower. Unless you have that the vision up there, making sure there's no one coming up from the from the river, um, then you're not going to have much luck here. As uh, we do see Thunder bring up to level three now, so using that lightning bolt, try and drop the the life there of Levin playing as our Soul Stealer. But uh, I think he's going to have a lot better time now. The Crete wave made it towards the tower, and uh, he can actually settle into a nice bit of 
of a rhythm here as Valk's in trouble up there on the top lane, leaving himself away. He got stunned there by Wish Doctor, but this is what we this is what we knew was going to happen. They, we knew there was going to be harassment. We knew these guys are going to be spamming up their spells, even at level one, and uh, that's exactly what these guys have to be be prepared for. And I think Valk's already having a great time, already up to level three up there on the top lane. Yeah, Valkyrie, the, the good thing about Valkyrie going one versus two like this, because he has that leap ability, he can escape from uh, from uh, the double stun combination of Forsaken Archer and Wishlayer we just saw right there. And he is playing pretty passive, but he always can, as you know, with it on cooldown, that's why he's playing more passive than, than uh, before. But once he gets that, once that cooldown goes off, he'll be pushing up a little bit more. Pyromancer sending some illusions to the top lane to kind of throw them off guard and harass them a little bit, maybe make them fall back, which it looks like that actually accomplished that. So Valkyrie taking some creep kills in the meantime. Back at this bottom lane, though, Souls to there, yeah, he's been really... Really, he's been heavily pressured, no doubt, by this Thunderbringer. Thunderbringer doing an excellent job of just spamming that Chain Lightning and using his regen that he had. He is out of Mana Potions now, though. Or actually, no, he's not. I'm looking at somebody else. So he does still have a Mana Potion left, and uh, he's just really uh, making it a hard time for Levent right now, playing that Soul Stealer. Uh, as far as when looking back in the middle lane, we have that Zephyr Glacius combination going up against the Pyro Magnus. I'm, just, I, I'm, a, I'm a little surprised, not going to lie, that nothing is really happening uh, in this middle lane just yet. We did see that initiation on the Glacius early on, but since then, it's Seems like a little bit back and forth, but Magmus and Pyromance are definitely making their presence felt as Zephyr, he, uh, he's only eight, well, he's in the fight creeps, but oh. there's the initiation right there on his Zephyr, in comes the double stun combination, and then oh. they've got a bloodlust kill for KD Gaming, and that's what's so dangerous, the roasted chicken right there. Now they're going to go in on Glacius, maybe. No, he decides to fall back. I, they probably could have done it, but it definitely would have been a tower dive, but great job from the Hellborn team, and an excellent kill on his Zephyr. Excellent start once again for KD Gaming. KD, KD Gaming is... It's it's the um, the timing. The timing is literally what is getting them through this. They're in the right place, right time. They time their attacks well. They chain them well as well. And uh, there's there's just so much. It's so much to actually try and bring down at the moment. And because uh, while this is happening in the middle lane, you got two heroes pressuring two heroes in the middle. Valk is farming up there on the top lane, already up there at a, at a ten for ten for five now, going up there, almost actually out farming a lot of the other heroes at the moment. But uh, Thunderbringer is up to fifteen for eleven on the bottom lane, so that's going to be a bit of a concern. The amount of denying he's doing, as well as killing going up against the Soul Stealer, who is actually only at 7 for 2 right now, so he's not getting farmed up there. He's still moving up, he still hasn't died, and I think that's that's definitely one of the big things for Soul Stealer, because as he collects those souls, he can do a little bit more damage, a little bit by little bit, because um, he can't take him just yet. Magmus now heading up towards that top lane, wants to try and help out. And look, look at the instant, instant fall back there from Forsaken Archer. They've got them scared. They've literally got them scared. If Valk pulls off an arrow, or if a stun comes off there from the Magmus, it is uh, going to be very, very concerning for them to actually pull that one off, as our Magmus is actually back in the middle lane. And as he comes in, stun goes off in the back of Zephyr. As uh, they don't knock a chain off there, Pyromancer just falling back there. And he was actually firing up a mana uh, bottle charge there to actually try and get his mana back up there a little bit more. He actually got uh, interrupted during the middle of that one too. So uh, just consistent harassment coming up from both sides right now. They're still keeping the mana up there. Mana potions on everyone there to try and deal with this elder game harass they knew was coming. Uh, but they're doing it perfectly. They've always got mana. They're always ready for the initiation and ready for the attack. Yeah, no doubt. And that's the thing with KD Gaming. That's why that's what makes them such great players. They need to play aggressive, no doubt, but they do also need to keep in mind uh, that the Legion team can be coming in at any time, and they need to be ready for that. And they, they are very good at reacting, as we've seen time and time again from them. Valkyrie, he's 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 doing a good job at this top lane, no doubt. 15 and 7 creeps. Oh! Actually, actually, the bottom lane, and we see Souls Dealer going down. Zephyr setting up the gank down there, and Thunderbringer with a nuke to assist. A great combination right there. Uh, it seems like you actually caught that one. Unfortunately, I didn't catch it on camera, but... Uh, no uh, exactly what happened there. J j just the gust pulling him back into it. Soul Sealer, he doesn't have any vision around. Actually, do they have vision? Yes, there is actually vision coming in from the side there. So he knew it was coming a little bit late, though. Once Zeph Zephyr's movement speed is ra rather high, and of course, once you get that gust, it pulls it straight back there. And there's a lot of DPS that came out from the Thunderbinger just then. So they, they timed that one right to get back on top of it. But that's actually still the first kill. You're playing a 5v4, and uh, it took 5 minutes and 45 seconds before you got your first kill. Yeah, that's that's very true. It, it definitely hasn't been an action-packed game by any means. But when it's four versus five like this, you can't. Well, you know that's oh, the thing. Man. There's a bottom. gust at the bottom. There's a bottom lane. Yeah, Soul Stealer getting gusted in, but Soul Stealer turns it right around, throws out the oh! nuke, and he takes out Zephyr. A great blind nuke into the forest, and Soul Stealer an excellent defense right there. He got gusted in, but he's just like, screw it, I'm just gonna take you out. And the vent does just that. It's a great play right there. And unfortunately, uh, uh, Zephyr was by himself as Thunderbring was actually headed towards the middle lane, and a 
looks like uh, the Legion team actually planning a lane swap here. Glacius, he might be running into Magmus right here. Actually, Magmus stunning Glacius. Glacius, what is he going to try to do? Out comes the Steam Bath, and there's the Illusion Rune used. Glacius, he might be in some trouble here. That He definitely is out, uh, going to be out ran, but a nice freeze right there. Thunderbringer coming in from behind, though. Magmus has a choice to make. He stuns in. Is he going to get the kill? Yes, yes, he is. Great job by Magmus. Scott Bob doing an excellent job. Thunderbringer still on hot pursuit, though. Does he have a homecoming stone? No, he does not, but he's going to be able to stun in two seconds, and here we No, he gets gusted before he can. It actually screwed him up, and now he finally gusts out. In comes Pyromancer, though. Trying oh. to nip down Zoot, or Thunderbringer. Not going to be enough output damage, though. The auto attack, a couple more should do the job using the health potion, and it looks like he's going to be fine. Zephyr hanging in there as well, but that was enough to at least save Magmus. So great play by Magix right there, at least saving his teammate. Didn't get the kill, but saving the teammate, definitely worth it. And in the meantime, Soulsteel are actually pushing the bottom lane by himself. KD Gaming, again, they're just looking so good, and it's no doubt that the momentum is still carrying with them. It, it feels like bait. Everything feels like bait coming out from KD Gaming. It's just working so beautifully from the Pyromancer, leaving the mid lane just the right time to come down. He's also level 6 now. If he did have his ulti during that last battle, everything it, they would have claimed. They would have claimed both of them just then, and uh, Zephyr would have had to fall back, and uh, it, it would have been a beautiful thing to watch here, but 3-1 uh, to one so far, and uh, KD, KD Gaming is... They're, they're looking good. They're looking sharp. It, everything is just working for them right now. And I'm pretty sure that Honey is quite, quite happy to um, put the, uh, the flight travel plans. It, it, he, he's confident in his own team to actually take this out 4v5. But oh, I'm starting to get confident after what they did last time. Obviously, there's still a long way in this match to go. We're eight minutes into it. The start's been good. But if they can follow it up and keep it going, that's going to be the question. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it, the same thing happened in Game 1, really. They, they uh, got off to an excellent start, but it was really just one bad decision when it came to a Team 5 matter of splitting up when they shouldn't be, and uh, it ended up resulting in a genocide, and then they were not able to recover from that. So hopefully, as long as they keep the space going, they can definitely have something going here. Valkyrie, perhaps, no, for second I was thinking about it, but uh, realizing that Magnus was nearby as well, decides to sprint away with those Ghost Marchers. Pyromancer sitting in this middle lane now by himself, but Thunderbringer coming there to kind of uh, give him support. So Zephyr and Glacius have fallen to this bottom lane. Zephyr was just not having a good time in that middle lane with that double stun combination, so uh, deciding to go down there to try to get up his farm. Magma's thinking about going on to somebody here, going on which lane, in fact, but Valkyrie is not there to really help him just yet. Throws up the steam bath. The graveyard stun just misses. Kind of unfortunate there. If he got that combination off, might have been able to do something, but instead misses, and Magmus is going to be fine. Valkyrie was a little bit too far away, unfortunately, to set up that double stun combination, and ended up having to fall back, but again, Soul Stealer seems to be doing pretty decent here at this bottom lane. Uh, He's looking at a, he's looking around, two, around 210 gold per minute. Again, KD Gaming, they're very consistent. All of them at least above 200 gold per minute, minus uh, Kabob playing the Magmus, but he's still at 180 gold per minute. So very solid play. Magmus now initiating auto for second archer. In comes the stun, maybe. No, Valkyrie's choosing not to throw an arrow. Wanted to play safe once again, more so just for harassment purposes. But uh, Valkyrie getting some nice fun action at the bottom lane, though. Down goes Soul Street, the Thunderbringer ultimate on top of the Zephyr ultimate and Glacius as well. So that was basically three versus one right there. And Soul Street was not able to live. Good play right there from K or excuse me, TXL, and uh, that's definitely one of the heroes that you you want. You do not want to get farmed up. So a good kill, and, uh, very, very good kill actually. Now that's the second death of the game for Levant. That was an easy kill to get though. I'm just wondering why it took him so long to actually go down and actually get that kill. Obviously, there's there's very little vision coming in around the side of those trees. He moves himself down past the river, and you instantly then become into basically danger zone. You cross that river, you're going into enemy territory. You understand that when you do it, and uh, you take the risk when you do that as well. So I'm just wondering if that's the best way to go. Looks like we've actually got Soul Stealer now back here on the bottom lane. He's got Pyromancer in, in tail, who's got all the mana, all the spells, all ready to rock and all rumble, and they might catch Zephyr. They're going to catch Zephyr. Is the stun there? He already oldies it. Not enough damage, and there's the Demon Hand coming a very, very long Demon Hand coming out there from Soul Stealer, and uh, well, Levin's just showing how good he is to actually get that on target. A lot of people don't realize just how hard those demons, Demon Hands are to place, and uh, he got that absolutely perfectly. Yeah, that was a great job by uh, Levant, no doubt. And again, going back to that, those demon hands are a lot more difficult, especially at ranges like that, to really judge with the angle. And a very good job by Levant, uh, no doubt. I mean, uh, Glacier's coming in, putting out a slow, trying to harass both Soul Stealer and Pyromancer here, maybe make them fall back. But uh, they, they just might have to, unfortunately, because of the creep wave. But now they've got a creep wave to work with. They're going to nuke down these creeps, and they're going to look to go for a tower push, but they need to be careful. Zephyr is here as well. However, Soul Stealer and Magnus, are, or excuse me, Pyromancer are now just going to fall back. 
back instead. So uh, definitely the smart play right there. And uh, they're going to fall back and maybe teleport somewhere else. Whereas this top lane, Forsaken Archer actually getting some free farm in the meantime. Uh, speaking of Forsaken Archer, looking around 203 gold per minute. So not doing too bad. But uh, it's behind uh, several of the players on the Hellborn team. Let's look around at some more items, in fact. Bottle and Boots on Thunderbringer. Let's look at Magma. Same thing. Bottle and Boots pretty much. Soul Stealer, how is he doing? I got Bottle and Boots. <laughs> Seems to be a repetitive issue. Uh, Ghost Marchers picked up on Valkyrie right there. Forsaken Archer, Ghost Marchers as well. Witch Slayer with Boots. So, Boots are really the popular thing in this game. Practically everyone has Boots, and you know, uh, the Ghost Marchers with Boots is just that at this point. Well, th these Boots are made for walking, so that's exactly what they'll do. <laughs> um, and, uh, oh, puns intended. Uh, Pyromancer now moving on down there, because you need that extra movement speed to actually get yourself in there and keep yourself in the position zone. Like, the speed you're moving, you can't afford to be slower than the enemy. You need to stay on top of it right now. As uh, Pyromancer coming towards that bottom lane, just harassing Zephyr back there. And even Glacius falls back behind the tower, just not quite sure, thinking about going in around the back flank there as more TPs coming towards the bottom lane. Valk leaves the top lane for the first time. Uh, heading on down towards that bottom lane. It's going to try and go for a bit of a surprise gank there on Zephyr. Might better push off. Long range arrow coming on through. No, it's just a little bit too far to the right there. If that hit though, Pyromancer would have just chained, chained, chained and it would have been all over. <laughs> but one one uh, quick, quick arrow that can come out from Valk and everything can turn, turn itself around as Valk now leaving that bottom lane thinking about it. But it looks like that's actually not happening in the mid where with uh, one hero actually going down. Yeah, Magnus. Magnus got caught right there unfortunately by a crippling volley and then the nukes coming out from Thunderbringer really didn't stand a chance. So good take right there from the Legion team and uh, uh, catching up and hero goes at least. Still, still a 4-3 to three hero kill lead though. Again, not, not the most action-packed game by any means, but a 4-3 to three hero kill lead in favor of KD Gaming. They're still looking pretty good. They're, they're getting some solid farm all around. Again, uh, 3 of the 4 are above 200 gold per minute, yeah, whereas Magma's the one uh, struggling a little bit behind, but he's, he's not doing bad by any means. He's definitely doing a solid job as well, but they could oh, use... Bottom. Oh, actually at the bottom lane, we did see actually Zephyr was taken out from the Pyromancer Valkyrie combination. Now Glacius trying to finish off Valkyrie. He's going to do so. But down goes Glacius as well. Now Pyromancer running away as uh, Witch Slayer and Thunderbringer are in pursuit. But here goes Magmus running around. And there goes a combination on a Witch Slayer. The ultimate was being used by Magmus. But he actually decides to, to cancel it. I mean, uh, you really might as well, honestly. The cooldown still goes. But uh, he decided to cancel it nonetheless. It really wouldn't have done anything. But who cares? Uh, the stun coming out from Forsaken Archer. Missing Pyromancer, though. Pyromancer out of mana, though. So might want to be a little bit careful here against this uh, Forsaken Archer Thunderbringer combination. But it looks like that's going to be that. So a nice little exchange there between the two teams. Valkyrie unfortunately dies, but they did get Witch Slayer and Zephyr as a result of it. And the top tower, meanwhile, being pushed by Soul Stealer, who again is doing a very solid farm himself, up to around 250 gold per minute. And if he can get this tower kill, will definitely increase quite a bit. But uh, he has a creep wave to work with now. Don't know if he's going to be able to do so with Zephyr, especially coming up there and looking to set up a defense. Speaking of Zephyr, looks like he's working towards his shaman's headdress. Not getting the greatest farm himself, unfortunately. Only at 135 gold per minute. Really been struggling throughout this game, especially with all the stuns here, but uh, hopefully he can pick it up for his TXL team. And, uh, and Vizrin just bottled up by Magmus as he's now uh, scouting things out. And he, no, Glacius is actually going to turn around, so nothing's going to happen there. But uh, Pesa slowing down once again a little bit here. But a 7-4 hero kill lead now for KD Gaming, and they're looking to push this middle tower right here. Yeah, and they definitely can too. There's three heroes, ready to rock and rumble, and you got one surprise one up your sleeve as well. Pyromancer coming in from behind. Off goes Witchlade, just stunning from behind, and very, very very quick on the back of Pyro, caught well out of position there. Magmus was nowhere to actually help him out just then, so uh, he was too he was too far away. And uh, well, that that loses him one easy one. That's that's a mistake. That's a that's a big mistake to actually lose one hero when ready to push up the middle. But they're going to try and get it back here. Thunderbringer chained on the stun arrow went off through after Magmus. Magmus lava surge came on through. They've almost managed to get him, but he's just one auto attack away from dying. Falling on back now. Magmus going on through. Chain stuns back up the top now. Witch Slayer goes on the back of the steam bath now. Magmus caught though in the ultimate of Glacius. Glacius brings him down, and uh, well, that's three down at the moment. Levin's the only one left alive at the moment, and he's fallen all the way back towards the main base here. And uh, well, you said there was a couple of mistakes. Pyromancer yeah. caught out of position. They weren't ready to actually engage that one, and that makes it seven away. They're still ahead on the kill count board, uh, <laughs> but that could be the mistake, which, which like the first match, changed it around. But so a bit, I think it's actually a big thing which has actually changed between maybe the first and second match is by this time in the second match, when Katie, when uh, Katie actually took this one out, uh, all Tier 1 towers were down. Yeah. All Tier 1 towers are down. They don't have that map position. They're stretched there at the moment, yeah. and uh, they find themselves caught out. 
Yeah, that's that's actually a very good point, no doubt. And uh, when you look at it like that, you do kind of start to worry a little bit if you're a KD, if you're a KD gaming fan. And at the same time, when you are four versus five, when you're already at the disadvantage, the mistakes they they just uh, magnify so much. Those small mistakes, like what just happened right there, unfortunately playing a little bit too over aggressive. Magnus did a nice job of actually picking up the kill on Witch Slayer in the end, but uh, he definitely shouldn't have even been in that situation in the first place with the rest of the team. So uh, definitely good play by TXL though, capitalizing as I like to say. Uh, uh, just because the other team makes mistakes, uh, the other team has to capitalize to really make it uh, worth worth their while, and uh, that they did. It's a good job on their part. Uh, right now, though, just looking around at Zephyr again, he's just kind of struggling on that farm still, but picking it up a little bit, not doing too much, so unfortunately, uh, doing his best about this top lane. Valkyrie is already here, porting in a soul stealer. We could see some initiation happening. Actually, Zephyr going in first. There's oh! though, but the soul stealer ultimate right on top of Zephyr, not doing too much damage, but a good amount. However, the Zephyr ultimate slowing them down. Uh, in pursuit, though, is Valkyrie. A nice Magnus on a Wish there as well. There now goes Valkyrie. Wish there is still Still alive somehow. He's going to live. Throws at the Great Star. Magnus goes down. Pyromancer now throwing out a stun on a Forsaken Archer trying to save his teammates. He is trying to run away here. Valkyrie and Solskjaer are still in here. Solskjaer throwing out a new key. Got caught though. And he's probably going to drop right here. This is going to be a big kill for the Legion team. Yes, they get Solskjaer. Great job. That's Levin. That's got to be frustrating for him. Now getting away is Pyromancer. He tries to run oh! into his Forsaken Archer. Yes! And the auto attack to take him out. But Thunderbringer <laughs> almost finishes out Pyromancer as well. But just not enough damage. And Pyromancer <laughs> going to live so just crazy sequence there once again I tell you even if KD Gaming ends up losing this this has just been such crazy back and forth action with all three of these games no doubt and you have to give a lot of credit to them for at least making it a crazy performance that was a crazy performance that was crazy by Pyro I thought the second he let out that flame uh, the, the Phoenix wave I didn't think he was going to survive that one it just threw it out there and they took the bait he turned around he just blasted the crap out of them and uh, managed to get that last hit I could not believe he managed to actually pull that one off but yes big loss soul stealer going down on the top the one hero you want to see farmed is the one hero we got absolutely ripped during that one and uh well now he's got to collect all his souls up again he's literally going to start from scratch but uh <sighs> they've got to push Where's the push? Where's the push? Being pushed out on the bottom. Magmus is actually in a lot, it was in a lot of trouble. He actually got dumped by the gust of Zephyr with, uh, of course, our Witch Slayer being on top of that one to actually bring it down there. So uh, three heroes, once again, com combining here. They can afford to take those three heroes out. They've still got one hero in every single lane. Top TP now coming back in from Glacius as well to help out Thunderbringer up there on, the, on the top lane. And once again, we're, sent, we're having, having to see Soul Stealer fall back. He can't push past the river. They don't have the support of the heroes. Um, but they're actually pushing the mid tower down as well. So Valk and Pyro should actually claim this one's so the first tower going down eight, 18 minutes and 40 seconds and I do believe that's actually the first tower to actually go down the map as yep. well and it goes towards the Hellborn so uh, it might Actually, Top Tower's about to go down as well. In fact, it does go down with the port going out. So, uh, well, maybe they actually heard my words before. In the 15-minute the mark, they had, they had at least two towers down by that point. And uh, now they're back on par with that one. But they're just four minutes behind the strat. Yeah, KD Gaming, I mean, they, they have a they have a run of just over a 1,000 goal lead, pretty much. And they are losing experience. I mean, obviously, they are a player down. But they do have that goal lead in about, you know, just over a 1,000. So, as a result of those two tower, two tower kills. So, that's definitely good news. But going back to what you were saying earlier with uh, where's the push. I mean, Magnus, he was pushing there, but uh, unfortunately, it was just by himself. When you're talking about push, you, you usually want to do it with your team. Uh, <laughs> and uh, as we saw, the end result, Kipop unfortunately got caught right there. But the push might be happening with, between Pyromancer and Magnus at this bottom lane. And they're going to be going two versus two against a Zephyr Forsaken Archer uh, combination, it looks like. And uh, we'll see if uh, that something happens out of that. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, Valkyrie kind of harassing, and Solskjaer pushing the top lane. So, again, going back to that, they are still pushing by themselves. They're just pushing separate lanes. Uh, they're taking a, a, a page. Oh, actually, actually, at the bottom lane, initiation happening. There's the ultimate from Magnus, and uh, Roasted Chicken comes out from Zephyr as the ultimate goes out from Pyromancer. Unfortunately, Pyromancer, he's also going to go down. Good job by Witch there, reacting with the homecoming zone and coming in there. And now Magnus, he's going to jet on out of there as he picks up a, a regen rune now. A nice, uh, that's uh, definitely a good rune for him to be picking up. But again, in the meantime, Valkyrie pushing the middle lane and Soul Stealer pushing the top lane. So <laughs> through all of that, uh, that was a one for one exchange. But KD Gaming still playing the aggressive with those team pushes and you got to give them a lot of credit for that. Yeah, you definitely do. I'm actually loving it. It's almost like they're running distraction strat. Uh, so run down the bottom, keep the push on, put your two hero combination over there with your double sun going. Valk can farm up the mid, get her get her items up there as much as you possibly can and she can still leap herself out, out of trouble if things go bad. You put Soul Stealer up on the top. He, of course, is running around with a port key and uh, the second he gets out in trouble, he can port key himself straight back out there as well. So they can push their lanes, they can still be, tr be half secure 
in the fact that they're that far over the river by themselves while the harassment is still going. And we're noticing that uh, TXL are committing three heroes. They're committing three heroes to try and bring down that double stun pair because if they try and face these guys uh, two on two, they're not going to come out on top. They know that they want to try and play the odds. But because that splits up their heroes, it becomes one on one in other lanes. And that's when Soul Stealer and Valk will get on top of you. Yeah, no doubt. And perhaps action being set up in the middle here as uh, the Pyromancer and Magma is going around the side. But looks like the Legion team reacting to it. And this is exactly what we're talking about. Right now, the Legion team, they're sitting back. They're playing passive. They're playing defensively. And uh, they're kind of playing like a strategy as if it was 5 versus 5, but that is not the case. I mean, you have to have the mindset knowing that you have the 5 versus 4 advantage. You have the numbers. I'm not necessarily saying just run in all suicidal, but you, you have to be playing aggressive. And what they're doing right here with which they're pushing up like that, I mean, I like that. It's, it's forcing the Selborn team to fall back a little bit, and uh, they're getting some nice farm out of it. And meanwhile, while that's going on in the middle, Zephyr kind of just chilling at the bottom lane, uh, not doing too much and not getting killing any creeps or anything. So uh, he's afraid to push up, I guess. He doesn't want to get caught, so he is staying back near the tower as much as possible. Magmus, uh, he might be getting caught right here. Out comes the slow from Glacius. He's going to be in a lot of trouble. That water side spot of him is going to try to get out of there with that lava surge. It should be able, uh, able or enough range. He's going to be fine. Meanwhile, though, at the bottom lane, Valkyrie and Zephyr going one versus one. It looks like Valkyrie is taking some a little bit of pressure, but he is now falling back and would be the smart decision to get out of there because you see more and more players coming from the Legion team. And it looks like they are starting to get out. In fact, the homecoming stone being used by Magmus to go to the middle lane, and they might try to be uh, putting Pushing something in the middle, perhaps. But again, you see Soul Stealer just free farming this top lane. It seems to be a trend now with this KD gaming team. They're distracting elsewhere and allowing Levent to get a strong farm now up to 300 gold per minute. <clears throat> he's already finished that portal key, and now he picks up a Warhammer, so I would definitely believe he's going for that shrunken head. And he is level 13. That's another big thing with Soul Stealer. He needs those levels, and he's getting that nice arrow from Valkyrie, hitting a 4.5 seconds on Glacius, followed by the nukes. A nice hex, so preventing Valkyrie from finishing him off. He freezes himself, and this might be a turnaround. This Glacius going to live. He's taking up a neutral creeps. No, a Pyromancer comes in and says, you know what, I'll just clean it up for you. Great job right there. That was kind of unfortunate that Valkyrie wasn't able to get the kill, but uh, barely living, but eventually did go down. So it's a great arrow, though, once again for Valkyrie. Both Overpow and Trixie, they've been doing such a good job with the Valkyrie hero today, landing those arrows. Got to give them a lot of credit for that. Again, though, I go back to this top lane, and I just see Soul Shooter just chilling over there, just farming the creeps. <laughs> uh, Thunderbringer's going one versus one with him, but Soul Shooter's getting a very nice farm right now, and if, if I'm TXL, I'm worried about that. Uh, I'd be very, very worried about that one. Not only is he getting a farm, but Valk is having a farm while these other two guys are playing silly buggers inside the neutrals. They just keep on splitting themselves up. There's no hero to actually really go up against these guys at the moment. All of the, uh, all the, all of the boys from uh, TXL, they're leveling up around the same pace. They're not, they're not pushing themselves up any further. Like, you, you, still got the thir you still got the 13th Thunderbringer, um, but that's because he sold you had that little bit of extra on top of him. Um, but everything for KDE, they're all level. They're all moving up together. They're all at the same level. So whenever a fine actually starts off, they're all literally got as, mu as much skill as the other and they're ready to push in and uh, if you lose one the battle still continues uh, mm -hmm. and I think that's a big, big thing. They don't want someone being lower levels. Look at Valk, just straight towards the middle just lets off the call of the Valk and everything just flies on down and claims the entire creep wave and more gold and of course Firebrand is already up. We saw this happen last time. It's, it's not going to be long before the Bane comes out and then of course you just push those lanes with the three Valk and uh, that bottom lane it should have been down a while ago. Like that deep that defense tower of the tier 1. It's only just up at the moment. Zephyr's heading back down there right now. So three heroes heading on down as Pyromancer. Thinking about going down towards that bottom lane. Very, very wisely falling back now. Might even get gusted. Careful he does get gusted. He's in the mix of it right now. Stunned off the back of it and uh, Witch Slayer on top of it and um, caught out of position once again. That happened once before and the team went down after yeah. that one. So uh, hopefully we won't see uh, a return of that one because while that's happening top lane goes down as well. So Levin actually gets killed while he's trying to push that tier 2 tower on the top lane too. So uh, now we're even finding the 1v1 battles aren't coming out on top here. Yeah. So great job by Thunderbringer. Nuking down Solstice there. A triple nuke right there to get the job. So Solstice sticking in there without much life. Uh, trying to play aggressive and uh, go for that tower kill but unfortunately it cost him his life. Meanwhile the bottom tower taken out. And that's that, that, that is the one downfall when you're running a strategy like this. What KD Gaming is doing uh, obviously their forward side that's not a strategy. That's just because they're missing a player. But this strategy meaning that they're spreading out despite being, uh, but despite having to play 4 versus 5 and they're pushing individual lanes like we keep going back to and we
we saw right there, Pyromancer was completely picked off simply because he was by himself and it's a three-man pick and uh, he really stood no chance. So you're definitely going to be dying uh, uh, when it comes to situations like that. So the kill on Solskjaer, I mean, that's another huge kill. We just got finished talking about how you cannot let him farm and Pyromancer took care of that job, getting the kill on him and now Solskjaer just resurrecting. So uh, we'll see what he's doing. But speaking of another farmer, in fact, Valkyrie has taken over the farm lead, over 300 gold per minute himself, finishing that Firebrand and going the identical build he did last game. Going to be going for that geometer spin once again. Now taking out the Stephen Tower. He's going to try to get it before the home guys. Oh, no, the cliff of invulnerability. And he's going to have to leap out to play safe. I mean, what is he? Oh, he's coming back in with the, it looks like an Invis rune that he used. The tower, unfortunately, is denied, so was not able to do too much. Uh, that's a good, great play from TXL right there. That, that's a huge tower deny. The Levent, or excuse me, uh, Valkyrie opening, though, on to Zephyr coming out of the Invis. Meanwhile, at the bottom lane, the, the bottom tower is killed by both Soul Stealer and Magnus. So uh, the tower push is still happening for this Hellborn team, then they have the advantage, no doubt in that. Four tower kill advantage to only one for the Legion team, and uh, as a result, we're looking at around a 3,000 gold leader, so in favor of KD Gaming, and uh, they are taking advantage of that, no doubt. And now Magnus, he's kind of roaming around. Speaking of Magnus, he's actually picked up his portal key, so another very nice pickup there for KD Gaming, and that has a lot to do with those tower kills, no doubt. Yeah, that, that definitely does. But yeah, the, the big thing was that even distraction from Valk up there on the top lane, allowing the two heroes to push through on the bottom. The blink comes in. Oh, right on top of it. And Slan was not ready for that one. Magmus, having the only one was the steam bath, trying to survive from that one. Luckily moving himself away, but massive! Nice. Massive! Oh, Forsaken Archer couldn't have put that any better placement and managed to actually bring down not only our Valk, but also the Magmus. Literally, their corpses have now disappeared here while Soul Seal and Pyromancer are coming back in towards the middle. But what timing. There was an almost great play there with the Seam Bath coming out. Just managing to avoid that one. They're moving out of it, keeping that Invis, which, which did hang, hang around for a little bit there as Pyromancer trying to demolish the Creep Wave. So these heroes literally have to tank this tower to actually survive it here. While the Skeleton Minions are actually doing most of that for them as uh, Witch, Witch Slayer just being forced back just that little bit there. They don't want to get too close though because the second they do, they can actually be easily brought down by these boys. So uh, they're going to fold themselves back a little bit here. 2v4 two v, two v, uh, two v four at the moment is not the odds you want to try and fight even if you are next to a tower. That tower is actually in denied range now too so uh, something to also be slightly concerned about here. In fact they might even, Pyromancers are coming back down now if you can get it off. The TP's coming off, the Glimp is firing off here. They should get the deny off here as uh, he's going to take out the creep wave here just first. Take the aggro for it but no they're not. They're right in the middle of it. Soul Stealer comes straight into it. Less off the old Iglesias is the only one to actually die from the middle of that one too so uh, Soul Stealer has actually managed to, it is, it is completed I think it is actually completed. The trunk and head yes. is actually completed, and the mid tower is now denied. Wow, that 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 could have been a lot worse right there for the Legion. You look at all, you look at Thunderbringer, uh, for Second Archer, and Wish. They're all their lives. A couple more auto attacks for each of them. They would have been dead. That Soul to their ultimate was perfect. Unfortunately, to just did not have enough follow-up with the stuns, was not able to keep them in place, and they were able to get away, so that was a big opportunity there for KD Gaming. We're not able to truly capitalize, but they did still, still take out Glacius, and they denied the tower, like you said, and uh, all of them lived. But uh, going prior to that with the TXL plan, very aggressive there, uh, th that's what they need to do. Uh, the Zephyr got, got knocked off right off the bat, a lot of that due to the fact from the Pyromancer Ultimate, they could have easily said, oh, wait, now we don't have our tank, we need to turn around because we're, we're going to get screwed here. They didn't, they kept playing aggressive and then they went. Now comes a stun onto Zephyr launching the ultimate as after the arrow missed it. That's, un that's unfortunate right there. If the arrow hit, that would have been a kill for sure. Now Valkyrie oh. leaping in and that you cannot do. That You cannot do that. He leaps into certain death. Uh, again, going back to that KD game and just simple mistakes like that when you're already playing 4 versus 5. It's so unfortunate. He did end up getting the kill on Zephyr but you know at the risk of his own life, a 2 for 1 exchange it's obviously not something you want especially when you're already down a man in the first place, so uh, just uh, that, you, you hate to see that, especially with uh, with uh, how much uh, hype has been on KD Gaming right now and how they're already playing with undernumbered. And you know, it's they've been doing such a great job in the first two games. In fact, winning the last one, but. If they keep making mistakes like that, they're no doubt gonna they're gonna be giving this game away to TXL here. But again, TXL, you gotta give a lot of credit to them as well, of course, as they've been doing a great job themselves. But Soul Stealer, I mean, he now just ported up to the top lane. He currently is at 334 gold per minute. Hasn't uh, gotten anything else since that portal key and shrunken head, but he does have 1,800 gold saved up. So I'm really curious at this point to see what Soul Stealer goes for. Uh, you would figure it, it would probably be his attack modifier at this point. What that's going to be is definitely up for debate, whether he goes for a shield breaker. For 
for more individual DPS, or if he goes for something like a, like a lifesteal item, uh, Whispering Helm into eventually uh, Symbol of Rage. It's going to be interesting to see what this Soul Stealer decides to choose. I mean, Geometer's Bane is ob obviously another good pickup as well, and he could just as easily go that route. So I'm really curious to see what Soul Stealer goes here. Yeah, it's, it is going to be interesting to see what he actually does go. Um, I think we're just going to leave it in his hands at the moment because obviously you're looking at this lineup at the moment. Even if they do want to try and farm it up, I've almost got a funny feeling they're going to save a little bit of money just for the buyback, just in case something does go horrendously wrong. As uh, Soul Stealer come back in towards the mid there, just supporting with Valk. They are still keeping these lanes pushed out though. So even though they are losing heroes, like you, you noticed before when they lost those two heroes up, up there on the top, Pyro instantly came down, blasted the creep wave, pushed it back over the riverside. So even though they are losing heroes, the TXL guys are not making the most of it. They're not actually pushing it. They're not getting the, any, any advantage. They're not taking out any any real towers. Like we've lost all our tier one towers apart from the top line here for the Hellball, which is actually pretty damn high on HP. Uh, but that's literally as far as they're pushed. They haven't pushed any further. The uh, map control is still technically going towards KD Gaming at the moment. They're holding the tower, the, all the tier one towers down. They've taken out one of the tier two towers as well. I think they're about to do something about it, though with uh, the boys pushing up towards the top here for TXL. And uh, yes, Witch Hunt is leading the path here. Magmas already uh, TP'd himself up there. Uh, the old fashioned way. Walking is uh, what Pyromancer is all about. He's all about actually getting the fitness levels in here. While we've got one, two, three, four, five heroes all ready to push this tower. TP supports now come in here. Soul Steel is there as well. Pyromancer just wiping up that wave nice and early. They want to try and bring it down now. The, de the defense tower really getting hit. The T1 tower. Soul Stealer waiting for the right time to go in there. He does have his ulti. The tower does go down. And in he comes now. Literally going off on the back of the Magma Salt. He goes into Steam Bath as well. Lost a lot of HP on the back of this one. Levin's already managed to claim double on, the bit on this one. Still staying alive at the moment, and even our oh, Thunderbringer is going to burn himself to death at the moment. We've lost two from one. The Soul Steel and the Soul Steel are actually chasing it. Chasing. Can he kill for a second? Oh. No, he can't. Not enough mana, and not enough not enough time to actually fire off all those demon hands in time. Because while that's happening, Valk is pushing that bottom, has taken out the Tier 2 tower, and uh, is trying to actually push in on top of that Tier 3 tower. So even that Tier 1 tower defense was almost a distraction. They defended. They brought down three heroes against of five heroes with only three up there. That's just that's just absolute quality. While Valk was playing the playing the uh, the Duke down the bottom, that that shows you right there what initiation can do. I mean, that that's three versus five, like you said, Valkyrie was at the bottom the whole time, getting that farm. In fact, and I think KD Gaming definitely came out on top of that fight, no doubt. Especially with that Valkyrie being down there, taking out the tower, and then even starting into the base. But uh, the Magmas initiation into the Soul Stealer. I mean, that was just such so well executed from KD Gaming, and they definitely deserve to win that fight, no doubt. By the way, Soul Stealer, he has spent that gold that he was farming up, picked up some post days. I didn't even realized that he still had red boots, so uh, post is a very solid pickup. It's definitely going to, especially in a game like this, where it seems like there's a lot of movement going on, and you, you definitely want to have the, the ability to port on anywhere on the map, or, well, for the most part, uh, most places on the map, obviously, as long as there's a creep nearby, uh, to uh, to assist your teammates or go and uh, continue to farm, and uh, it's definitely it's a very solid item for him. And again, you look back at the farm for KD Gaming individually, 363 for Soul Stealer, 317 for Valkyrie, and they are going to be doing Congo right here. A stun into Congo right there for Magnus, and it's uh, there. Are, I don't see any wards aside up for the Legion team. And look at the Legion team again. This is what I'm talking about. They they're, they're playing so passive. You 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 kind of, you go back to it. it's five versus four. You think you you have to have the mindset that you you just need to push in opportunities like this. You have the number advantage. I mean, I, I just don't like to see them playing so far back like this. And they're giving a Conger kill oh. to KD Gaming. Easy Conger kill. No harassment whatsoever. And that's a, that's going to be a token of life on Soul Stealer. So uh, along with that shrunken head, he's already hard enough to kill with that. I mean, now you have to kill him twice. So. That's 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 huge for KD Gaming, no doubt. That makes it 5v5. That literally makes it 5v5. You've got one hero double over. But I just don't know why, that, like, even a Thunderbringer ulti, just to keep tabs. We've got no one in the lane, so you can't spot anyone at the moment. Even though there's four of them, if you let off a Thunderbringer ulti, you see them, they, they do the damage. You might have even actually claimed one of their lives during that one. I, uh, one of the boys actually got a little bit low during that one. I think it was actually Kebab actually got uh, rather low in HP uh, during that fight with, with Congor. And I think now they've actually thought, okay, well, if they're going to do this one, we're going to push over. So they're actually heading up in towards the Hellborn neutrals. They might find Valk dropping down a ward now. So uh, Valk would have actually caught a very, very quick glimpse there of Zephyr just moving inside the neutrals just then. In fact, he actually moved himself down 
down and taken out the creep wave. So still pushing it down now as uh, Hell Br uh, Th Thunderbringer actually coming on through, just putting off that chain lightning, trying to actually push that wave back out a little bit. And I think they're rallying the defense. Once again, now we see Pyromancer hiding inside the trees. Magmus just a little bit far away, just so he can actually get himself on top of that. He's also now got himself a port key as well. So you get that port key on the back of his stun. There is nowhere to actually run once he's actually on top of that one too. And you throw that on the back of the eruption as well. And uh, he can really just turn these fights inside out here. And of course, just covering the distance so, so fast. Valk still moving through. They're like hunting on the sides at the moment, but there's still the massive grouping for once it's actually going to help this Legion side out as they're still pushing up the middle here. Pyromancer waves straight over that creep wave. They don't want these waves pushing anywhere near the towers. They stay on top of it. They say the second that wave pushes near the tower, they thought, okay, well, they're going to try and push on top of the tower. Um, the wave will take the damage and they can literally concentrate on the heroes around the tower. They don't have to worry about it when they push in that deep and it catches the people out of position. But this time around, they're just staying on top of it. The KDE boys are making sure that it's come through. Valcaro flying straight through the middle of everyone just there, hoping for a bit of luck on the back of it, but uh, nothing coming out for them. So, but it's literally this Mexican standoff in the middle lane, waiting for something to literally just break into, break into an absolute sweat. Yeah, you know, it's a game of chicken. Like I, I like to call situations like this. Who's going to go first? Who's going to react? Who's going to blink first? Whatever you want to call it. Uh, three players right now here for the Hellborn team. Actually, no, all four are here. So, uh, arrow coming out. Is it going to hit anyone? No, it's the not. Middle. There's a spread there. Yeah, right down the middle. It's a touchdown, but uh, or field goal, I guess you'd call it. But unfortunately. That doesn't uh, mean anything here in Heroes of New Earth. As uh, still all five clumped up here for for uh, TXL, but at the same time, you say clumped up. That's not what they want to be doing, especially going up against this Magma Solstealer. They are going aggressive, though, and miss Gusto on Pyromancer. I did hear a portal key. I thought I heard one at least. In comes Valkyrie, putting in some auto attack damage. Back. Here comes Magma. Now that's also right on top of Zephyr. Oh! And Zephyr's going to go down, and now Magma's trying to save himself from Thunderbringer. Thunderbringer chasing him now. Wister is dropping fast to Pyromancer. He's going to go down. Hatcher coming out for Levent. Playing that Soul Stealer. Now Thunderbringer trying to stay alive. He missed. He avoids the Magma stun. For second Archer with the ultimate. There's that token of life, though, and the ultimate from Magmus. It's going to still go on a Forsaken Archer despite di dying right there. Soul Stealer, he needs to be careful, though. He does not want to die right here after dying from the token of life. He is going to fall back. But again, such a nice fight. A great initiation from KD Gaming. And they just melted Zephyr right there. Once again, turning him to that roasted chicken owl, whatever you want to call him. But that's, you know, credit to TXL, though. They kind of turned that around a little bit. They were able to take out Magnus and Pyromancer, and in the end, they even took out Soul Shooter, but obviously that token of life, so uh, in the end, it ended up with a 2 versus 2 so credit to them despite the slow start, but uh, definitely a great job from McKady Gaming once again, and it just shows you what they can accomplish if they synergize so well. Yeah, they definitely can. Like, the timing, Magnus, I don't think actually moved. I think his APM stats literally just dropped down to zero while he was waiting right next <laughs> to that outpost, but uh, just d decide to, in the end, get, we're going to do this guys, we're going to do it, but once again, do you notice the two heroes which decide to actually take the fall Magmus and Pyromancer. Valk, Soul Stealer, untouched, still alive. They got the kills as well. The hat trick's coming off on it. And uh, they're the important ones. They are literally just pushing so many resources on the back of these guys. Levin's already up to level 20. He is being chased here by the Thunderbringer. The Thunderbringer up to level 19 at the moment. So we are. Uh he's still the highest ranking hero on, on the map at the moment. And uh, he is moving his way up. Coming on that top lane now, just wiping out the Kree wave. Just so much damage comes out from him during that one. He uses a lot of mana to do so, though. That's the only downside here, but he can BT himself back out. In fact, that's exactly what he's doing. BT him back to base, regen up the mana. That's why he used most of it just then. Because while he's doing that, Valk running around the middle at the moment has actually managed to actually pick up an Ice Brand now on top of it. So uh, Ice Brand as well as the Bane. So, well, crank up yeah. that damage a little bit further, if you so desire. Yeah, definitely, no doubt, and it's, so he went that geometry spin right now, the Ice Brand, like I said, going to be finishing that Frost Burn, most likely, I mean, it's possible, because could see a Frost Skull, I guess, I mean, we see it on Forsaken Archer, but I would definitely expect a Frost Burn, they're going to try to steal these Ancient Creeps here, it's only one, unfortunately, though, so not really much going out of that, but they are looking to perhaps initiate here on TXL, TXL, again, playing very defensive, they're sitting behind that secondary tower, and uh, they're, they're just pretty much waiting for an opportunity for them, Valkyrie, though, going to the top lane, he's now just going to push it with those uh, Geometer Bane Illusions, all five players from the Legion team, though, heading over, baiting on this right here, abiding on this bait right here. There goes a gust. However, the leap away just like that, and he's going to be fine. Meantime, the middle lane now being pushed by the rest of the team, or Magnus and Pyromancer, at least, and Soul Studios at the bottom. So, uh, Katie Gaming, they're taking a page right out of Empire Gaming's book, pretty much, and just doing all these solo pushes on pretty, practically all three lanes. And it's it's been working out. Again, though, there is a downside, obviously. If, if they do get caught by themselves, they're definitely going to be dropped, but but 
but uh, you know, it's it's working it's working well so far for KD Gaming as they are in all three lanes right now. I mean, Valkyrie's at the top, Solstice at the bottom, and Magnus is in that middle doing his best right there. And you, whereas you look at the Legion team, they're all sticking together. They're not able to kill anyone, unfortunately, because they keep uh, they're, not, they're just not able to catch them. But, oh, I missed Gus right there on a Magnus. That would have been a kill. And Magnus pours out just before anything bad happens. By the way, Thunderbringer picks up Portuguese. And what is TXL doing? Their base is getting destroyed. The top tower is being taken out. The bottom tower is being taken out. They port to the top one. But Solstice, he should be able to take out this bottom tower now. Unless the Homecoming Stone comes in. Uh, here comes the Nice stun. Oh. Right as he comes in. And the ultimate right on top of him. He easily drops right there. Thunderbringer using that tablet of command to get out. And perhaps save his life. But this defensive tower is still dropping fast. And now they're making their way down here. But again, you look back at the top. And Valkyrie putting pressure up there. This is unbelievable play by KD Gaming. They are just making these decisions so difficult for TXL. Now they're going on to Valkyrie. Valkyrie leaping the wrong direction. Oh, he got tableted right there. He leaps into the force. And oh, a nice stun, though. Stopping his homecoming stone. The ultimate from Thunderbringer comes out, and they actually take out Pyromancer right there. And Solstealer, he is in fist. He needs to get out of there. He uses that portal key to try to help himself, and it looks like he should be fine. So that's going to be that. Wow. How they managed to save both towers is beyond me. Uh, so I get you have to give credit to TXL. I mean, they had to go back and forth, back and forth, and even oh, actually Valkyrie went down. Actually, I, unfortunately, I missed that. Where did she? Uh, uh, leaped into the trees. Oh, that's right. She side. got killed off there. Yeah, I was paying attention to the bottom side. Going action, go down there, and eventually uh, Valkyrie was taken out as well. So that's that's unfortunate. What seemed like to be a lot of momentum for KD Gaming right there. This is going to be a big turn in TXL. They're going to try to capitalize with the push themselves. Bottom and top lanes though, still being pushed by Magnus and Soulstealer. Uh, that they definitely are. The, look, Solstil is even still down there. If anything happens, he just port keys out and BTs himself off. There's uh, there's literally no risk to what he's doing as well. The mid push is now coming, so he might try and make the most of this one. As uh, we are seeing the Legion, all five, hang on, what, yeah, all five heroes now hitting on the tower. The Glimp has fired up, trying to buy them time, and they're teeping back. They're not going to actually push in hard enough. The, tier, the tower has gone down the bottom. Zephyr's on defense duty. They claim the tier two tower and then uh, TP up towards the top there as well, doing a little bit back there. So. Magmus can't actually see that coming on through, and then Magmus just poor keys himself, just that little bit higher, pops off the Invis rune as well, but looks like Levent, Levenant on the bottom lane, he's managed to claim one so far, he's still alive on the bottom lane, even though he's getting stunned, ripped from Thunderbringer, he finally does go down, and uh, well, Soulsteel are very, very confident to push in there on the bottom lane, but once again, the, we're seeing the overcommitment, overcommitment here of KDE uh, to actually push them in, get those kills, and it just seems that they're, they're taking the whole philosophy of one kill is enough. If I can get one kill, then I'm happy with what I've done. Yeah, it's <laughs> that's definitely what it seems like. I mean, Katie Gaming though, they are just not they are not letting their foot off the pedal. I mean, they just keep it coming. Even with two deaths, there was two versus five, and they were still pushing separate lanes. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Uh, but it worked. I mean, it worked. They were able to get the tower kill. Unfortunately, Solstice there. You know, when you get the tower kill, I think you need to get out. He did a good job of killing Zephyr, but then he changed his attention to, to Witch Slayer, and he kind of he stayed there a little bit too long. But you know what? Uh, now Solstice has to wait another 44 seconds to resurrect. Zephyr is up in 10. Uh, we'll see. TXL, they're still not capitalizing, though. I mean... The Soul Shooter's down on the other team. Right now it's a 4 versus 3. I don't know why you wouldn't be pushing out in another lane. I mean, I know it's aggressive play from the Hellboy team. They've been doing a good job. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, nice stun on Forsaken Archer and able to take out the tower. But TXL, they've been just doing a lot of sitting back and uh, letting letting uh, KD Gaming control the pace of this game, even though TXL has had several opportunities to take over that pace of the game, but they've just chosen not to capitalize on it. Valkyrie just picked up something, and in fact, she is going for that Frostwolf Skull. As, uh, again, it's not an item we see a whole lot, but we're now seeing it twice in this game. Both Forsaken Archer and Valkyrie will have a Frostwolf Skull, and I, I mean, I can see why. Frostwolf Skull, it definitely brings a lot more stats as well, and it's a great, it, it, it still brings you the slow, but it brings you more stats rather than more damage like something like a Frostburn would, but uh, definitely a very good pickup, and when you're already going 4 versus 5, uh, uh, the more life, the better, definitely. Shieldbreaker has been finished on Soul Street, by the way. He said that for a while now, at least uh, 5 minutes or so. Magmus just doing some farm in the Legion jungle. And look at the Legion team. They're running around as a team. They don't. They just. They seem lost right now. They, they they don't know what to do and why they aren't aggressively pushing, aggressively ganking. It's just completely beyond me at this point. 
Uh, maybe they're just going, no, we can't take these guys 1v1. We can't go in, t in pairs of two. The team's not built for pairs of two either. Like, you, you could run around uh, you could run around Thunderbringer as, w as well as Witchlay, but there's only so far you're going to get with those two. And if you, get, if you get those two heroes caught out, you lose two, you're going to get pushed harder, and you're already on the massive defense. They're already having to split themselves up at, at different times, and then they try and get themselves back in the group. Then they try and split themselves up, get themselves back in the group. And uh, you're, you're quite right. Everything at the moment is going towards KDE's game, game speed. Everything is being set by them, literally. They're, they're winding up the clocks right now. Arrow flying on through. Looks like uh, Congor. Very, very long arrow there from Valk. <laughs> giving a massive stun on the back of Congor. But are they going to see it again? Is this going to be another free Congor? Are they going to come on through? Glacius now making his movement up here. There are boards. They are looking around. Congor has actually gone down. So they've managed to pick that one up here. And uh, what a fantastic little lava surge coming in there from um, from our from our big boy, our ma big Magnus. And then instantly Paul kicks himself back out there. Just being aggressive to allow his team to actually fall back here. And they do so. They go back, they heal up, and once again, we are going to have a live token push. It is literally, this This could do it, depending on how they actually manage to pull it off and what timing they actually get here. KDE have possibly the best advantage they could right now. All the creep waves over, and they've got an extra life in the back of, I think it's their soul steal, they, yes, they actually managed to pick it up. Yep. Yes, he did as well. So uh, you got that on the back of him as well. And uh, Warp Cleft, you look at his plus 55 attack speed on the back of it as well. This is, this is going to be insane when the push finally comes. And, uh, well, it's going to test TXL. It's going to test TXL as a team for their timing, for being in the right positions, and also just how well they can go at multitasking their lanes. Valkyrie right now pushing the top lane. We're going to have a Frostful Skull battle. Look at all the Frostful Skull uh, procs are used to going out between the between the two <laughs> heroes. It's, again, that's not something you see a whole lot, so especially with the split shot from it's Forsaken. It's like a snowball fight. Yeah, it's just a snowball fight. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking right there. Uh, Magnus and Pyromancer are here in the middle lane. They're kind of lining something up here. May maybe looking to push themselves, which again seems to be a strategy that KD Gaming is running right now. Whereas the Legion team, again, they're sitting back playing defense. You see Solskjaer, they're pointing to the bottom lane. And again, we see a dry lane push. It, it seems like we're going in circles here. It's, it's just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat uh, with KD Gaming here and TXL. The same thing with them, rinse and repeat with just well sitting back and uh, playing defense. And, uh, you know, KD Gaming, they've been having the momentum. Legion team, Zephyr, he is known as one of the more powerful turtle heroes in the game, no doubt. I mean, and this is a pretty solid turtle team here. Forsaken Archer's ultimate could definitely cause some problems. Uh, Crippling Volley as well, and then Glacius with the slow uh, can cause some problems there, but it's, it's only going to be able to do so much. As, as Solstu there, you know, he's looking really good himself. He's just so farmed up right now. And just look at this. They're just pushing the lanes individually, and the Legion team, they're not doing anything about it. They're sitting in their base, and they're waiting for the creep wave to they come to the them. I'm not a fan of that. Uh, we do see the top tower dropping really fast. The Illusion is trying to get the kill on it. Are they going to be able to? Yes, they are. Great job using those Geometer Bane Illusions. Taking out an Empire Match. Just trying to take out Wish over here in the middle end. That he does. A Magma down on top of that to assist with that. And just like that, it's an even playing field. It is now four versus four. There's a minute resurrection time on Witch Slayer. And the bottom lane being pushed by Souls to the right here. He has help coming in from Magmus and uh, no Pyromancer is not there with him. Pyromancer is still in the middle. And again, Valkyrie pushing the top. This is <laughs> I'm just what? so baffled. I've never seen anything like this before. It's divide and conquer. It is perfect divide and conquer right now. You've got Soul Stealer and Magmus waiting to push in the bottom. Valk harassing that top lane as much as he wants. Look, he's even just attacking the melee <laughs> barracks through everyone. Look at the range on that thing. Just hitting the melee barracks. Even finding from down the hill and getting and still getting the hit on the barracks. But he does so much damage off the back of it too. He can afford to do that. He's, do, he's still doing it. He's popped in now. Popped off the illusions. And they claim the do? first melee. In comes Thunderbring up the top there. They found the real one. But Valk just leaved himself back out. He's fine. There's enough stats on the back of him from all the items he's managed to farm up so far. Because while that's happening, bottom lane is being pushed. The Glimp had to fire off to try and save the melee barracks. Soul Stealer goes what in there. Lets off a, um, a rather interesting ulti on the back of nothing. But Pyro! Pyro ports in and rips Thunderbringer up. new one. Can he finish him off? No, Thunderbringer manages to actually get himself back out of that, out of the mix there and gets himself out as uh, ultimate. No, is it going to be enough? No, it's not enough actually coming off there from the Forsaken Archer. Trying to bring him down. They do manage to claim magic but he is literally the consolation prize. Magmus now teeping himself back towards the base. Knows the second that Thunderbringer actually gets his ulti back up again. That's all going to be over. In fact, Thunderbringer... Uh, hang on, as I'm just jumping towards the wrong hero, uh, Thunderbringer's ult, he has still got another 20 seconds on cooldown, so he's not going to be able to fire that one off just yet, but enough time to heal, but they're pushing back mid. 
What we got? Oh, this is rinse and repeat. We've got three heroes pushing mid here for Legion, and you've got once again Soul Stealer pushing the bottom, and he'll be able to claim the melee racks here. And we're going to see TP's once again more resources pumping into that one, but he claims the melee racks in time. So there's two melee racks down now. You get the front rows beefing themselves up, and they don't even have enough stuns to actually come off. Which layer was in the middle there? His stun was on cooldown. Um, miniaturized, miniaturization wasn't though. They could have actually pulled that one off, but uh, in the end, Soul Stealer escapes. 30 seconds left on cooldown for uh, we see Pyromancer to respawn now, and uh, they're still pushing in all the lanes, and the melee racks being down, they're literally, they're, they've gained another hero. Just by taking those racks down, they've gained another yeah. hero. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a fair statement, no doubt. And, well, they still have the token of life, remember, on Solster. After all of that, <laughs> after all of it. that, he still has the token of life. Now it's about five minutes remaining on it. And by the way, he also picked up a demonic breastplate. So uh, he is doing a lot of negative armor. That with him and Valkyrie hitting at any target, they're going to drop really fast, no doubt. It, it, it seems like KD Gaming, you know, 20 minutes ago, they're like, okay, Valkyrie, you call top lane. Solster, they're called bottom lane. Magnus and Pyromancy, you take care of the middle lane. One, two, three, go. I mean, that's practically what they've been doing here. It's just remarkable the strategy. And TXL I'm sorry, but you have to be play aggressive. You cannot sit back like this. It's so obvious what KD game. I know we're spectators and I know we get to see the mini map and it's a little bit easier for us to understand, but you have to take advantage of these. They're pushing by themselves. Why you are not going and pushing out past your base tower is just beyond me. In the middle lane though, finally we do see some action from the Legion team. They actually take out uh, Magnus right there. Pyromancer unfortunately was headed towards the bottom lane, so he got caught by himself. So now it's a 5 versus 3 advantage. So, and Valkyrie getting caught at the top lane now. He does not have his lead. Thunderbringer trying to chase him down. Not oh, going to no. be enough. Though. And Thunderbringer actually getting turned on now by... And there's a stun arrow stopping the homecoming stun. And Thunderbringer will probably end up dying. No, a nice tablet of command. He might be able to get away. Maybe not, though. The auto attack still happening. And no, just not finishing off, though. Valkyrie's going to play it safe right there. And he, again, he, he can't see the fact that no one was coming to help. And meanwhile, at the bottom lane, Soul Stealer going in and takes out Witch Slayer with his ultimate. Now turns his attention to Forsaken Archer. If he gets a kill right here, one more auto attack. Not going to happen, though. Forsaken Archer just going to fall back to base, but there goes the melee bottom. Range racks. Zephyr, meanwhile, and Thunderbringer coming in. They're going to try to take us. Also, there, a Master just says, I don't care about you guys. I'm just taking out your racks. <laughs> and Valkyrie at the top, he does the same with those top racks. Arrow coming out. Not going to hit anyone. Just in front of them. But uh, the bottom and top are completely cleared out. And now Valkyrie turns his attention to the middle uh, tower here. And... <sighs> I think you have to sit here and say it. this game is over. KD Gaming, it looks like they're going to come through with a victory. Unbelievable. How have they got it? They've got a double rack, so they push lanes perfectly, and once again, this is exactly what happened in the second game. They didn't push, they didn't go out there, they took out Magnus in the middle before, but that's because he actually, uh, he took the initiation. He literally lava searched himself in there, couldn't get himself back out, back out because he got done when he got caught in the steam bath, and that's the only way they got the kill. They literally... They, they were baited out there by Magnus while the other two lanes were pushed. While Soul Steel was ripping the bottom, even then Valk was actually baiting him on the top lane. Everything is literally smoke and mirrors with his KDE side. They're getting themselves in. Everything is controlled by them at the moment, and uh, they're waiting for the right time to push in now. There's only one Rax that's left here, and if they manage to actually catch one person out, the Courier actually dying up on top. That's a homecoming stun. That's a warp cleft. There's a warp cleft. That's a very, very expensive item to lose here. Magnus is going to come up here, and he destroys it as well. That is a lot of farm that is now destroyed up there on the top lane with Valk both heading up there to actually take I, it out. I think the arrow hit the courier. Right I think there. it did. I think, I it, think the, the arrow. Went up. I did not. Yeah, I did not. I wasn't paying. Even, I'm not, why would I pay attention to the arrow flying to nobody? But uh, sure <laughs> enough, hit the courier and then they took a warp cleft. That is just a slap in the face right there to TXL. Actually, though, happening in the middle lane, the gets power man's gets caught right there. A good little pick there from TXL. But now the Hellborn team, uh, they're actually going to fall back and. Uh, you know, play it safe. At this point, that, that's what they should do, honestly. The bottom and, and top lanes, the creep waves are going to take care of uh, what they need right there. They could honestly go back and get both Soul Stealer and Valkyrie even more farm and then really take over this game. I mean, when you look at Soul Stealer, what item should he pick up? Well, eh, he doesn't even have any slots, actually, so he's pretty much full. He's just saving up for buybacks at this point. Valkyrie, he could definitely replace, uh, he could re well, he could replace the ball, I would think, but uh, yeah, we'll see if he just saves up for buyback as well. But, I mean, you just look at this Legion team, the TXL. Valkyrie just charging in here. He's uh, just 
Chris Payne's so aggressive right here. He knows he has that leap to get out there. Out comes the silver bullet, but he has so much life. He's going to leap away. Meanwhile, while that's going on in the middle lane, Thunderbringer's taking out, trying to pour it out his Forsaken Archer. Not going to happen. And Soul Stealer picks up the double tap kill. And now uh, they're going to start pushing that middle lane. And we have the GG Well Plates coming out. Uh, this might officially do it. GG Well Plates expect to concede about. There yeah, it is. Insane. And that is going to do it. KD Gaming play. defeats TXL in game three, four versus five. And as a result, they move on to the finals. <laughs> wow. I, I, I don't know how to, I don't how? Know how to say what just happened. That shouldn't have happened. That should not have happened. I, I, TXL half gave that to them, but KDE, they, they earned that too. Yeah. This, this isn't, winning a 4v5 is not an easy thing to do. And to actually do your lanes perfectly like that, their positioning, their positioning, their timing, their initiation times, their distraction strats happening out there, the uh, the ability for the heroes, the main heroes to actually survive. So you saw Valk, you saw Soul Sealer survive through so many massive team battles, but Pyromancer and Magmus were happy to take it for the team while still doing the DPS, still initiating in it. And, uh, it, it was just fantastic play. Fantastic play. Fantastic work there from KDE side to actually be able to just be that dynamic on the fly. Mm -hmm. Again, TXL, I know a lot. I know they're going to get a lot of crap for this, no doubt. They, they just lost <laughs> four versus five in a best of the three series, two games to one. At the same time, though, they they performed well throughout this tournament. We casted several games with them. They looked very impressive. And they, they didn't do too bad in this game, but they did make several mistakes. We pointed those out. Yeah. And you know, you just hope that uh you just hope that they keep their heads high, you know, that they come they come out of this and you know they, they keep on competing. Because it is kinda I'm sure it is gonna be devastating for a team like TXL to coming off with a loss like this to such it's a great team though, let's be honest. Katie Gaming, yeah. they're a great team, excellent individual skilled players, and if any team can win a four versus five, like we said going into this it'd definitely be KD Gaming. So uh, not to, not to harp on TXL too much. They definitely are a great team themselves. Unfortunately, though, they are gonna they're probably gonna feel it for a while now, <laughs> losing this and uh, losing a chance at going to the stage finals match. Uh, I'm sure that's kind of depressing for them. Uh, it, it will be depressing for them, but there's only one thing you can do. Pick yourself up, get yourself into the next tournament and see what you can do from there. Mm -hmm. Watch the replays, learn what actually happened and learn as a team on how to actually work as a team. Because I think that's the big thing that really went down with that time. They stuck as a team, but they didn't work as a team. And uh, it's just something to look at next game. It's, uh, le le learn, from, learn from your experiences. That's, what, that's why you come to events like this one. Land is actually a very different way of playing. We mentioned halfway, halfway through the shoutcast, we're sitting here in the spectator mode. We can see the entire map. We can see what's playing, and it's very, very easy for us to actually judge what's happening here. But when you actually come to a land, it's a different environment. It's a different way of playing, and um, maybe they just weren't ready for it. Maybe they, it just wasn't the way of actually heading off it, and uh, it's something to learn. It's experience to pull away from it, and, uh, well, good luck to them, but even better luck yeah. coming out, of course, to our boys who are moving forward in to our, well, we are now to grand final. That was yeah, our, that was our a, that semi-final. Was the semi they are going the to the grand, grand final. This, you know, Hani supposedly he's going to be here for the grand. He will be here for the grand final, yes. from my understanding. So, I tell you, I, no matter whether it's Fnatic, MSI, or Druids, they're playing the finals. They are going to be playing a team that has unbelievable momentum going into it. So, KD Gaming, no doubt, they are going to be bringing it to the table, and it's going to be a tough no matter who plays them. So, grass to KD Gaming, winning this best out of three series, four versus five, and they take it two games to one. I'm going to wrap this cast up, guys. I was Breaky CPK, your shout casting host. Joining me was the great Toby Wan Kenobi of Gamesta.com. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And as always, stay tuned on Oncast.com for much more coverage. We will be back with Fnatic. MSI versus Druids, the second semifinals. Who will match up against KD, Ga KD Gaming in the finals? We will find out very shortly. Stay tuned, guys. I'm not exactly sure how long it's going to be. They are setting up currently, so it might be 10, 15 minutes or so, but uh, we'll keep you updated on the stream. So stay tuned, guys. We will be back.